Hi, my name is Coco with Rockham.com, and I'm here with multi-happening actor, producer, writer, and writer and social justice activist, Banga Atinabe. Did I say that correctly? You did. You did. <laughs> you said as close as I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the thing is, I'm, I'm African, too, so it's important to try to understand how people say their names. Where are your people from? You got people up, no, no, no. I'm from the other side of town. Uh, well, of the country. <laughs> or the, oh, I'm sorry, the continent. Uh, I'm from uh, Tanzania. My mother is actually originally from Rwanda, so kind of got oh, wow. what's going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and I said, I said, Bang, I said, let me see if I can watch like 15 different people say his name. <laughs> and I'll see if I can meet him in the middle and, and impress him. <laughs> I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Yay. So I see that you're Yoruba. Yeah, I'm a Yoruba man. But you were raised, oh, okay, okay. How far? <laughs> how fun. How fun. <laughs> and you were raised in, in the DC area. Yeah, yeah, I was raised, I was raised in Maryland. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you know what's so funny? Because I was like, you know, like I know your work, right? But then some people just look familiar to you. Like, don't I be seeing them at the stuff? So I was thinking, like, have I probably seen you in Brooklyn, right? I have. You probably have. Okay. That's my. That's that's, that's where I. I, base, I right? Yeah, that's my back cave. Okay. Okay. I was like, I'm not crazy. I feel like I've seen him around. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like not just on television. So okay, you, you're making me not feel like I'm losing it so much. No. Um, <laughs> But I know we were just talking about, you know, the pronunciations of our names and everything. And I wonder, like, what it was like for you, too, the duality of being an African child that's first generation in America, because I relate to that as well. Oh, wow. It's, it's been, I mean, it's it's been, I'm glad for my life and experience that I had. It was, uh, it's been amazing, but not, not the whole time. Sometimes it's tough, you know. Yeah. yeah. The black kids in America can be, kids in general, but black kids, like, you know, tearing cool, you up. Right? Kids, mm -hmm. Yes, now, yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I experienced the same thing. And I remember, too, like with school, and I wonder if this happened to you, a lot of times people would try to anglicize my name. My, maybe my dad would ask me, like, do you want to change your name to something that they can pronounce? I was like, as a kid, I was like, no. Good. Good for you. My yeah. mother asked me the same thing, yeah. too. Like, like, no, no. I'm like, no, I'm good with this. Like, if, you know, they'll eventually get it, yeah. They'll learn, exactly, they'll learn it. I, I had to learn Elizabeth and Kate. They're going to have to learn Benga. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um. And you've spoken about growing up with lesser means at some particular point. So you know what it's like to really kind of have nothing. Um, how does that how does that inform how you move today? Like, do you have any kind of like crazy like ass? Are you like a supercar person? Is there <laughs> the the I try to to waste nothing. Um, mm -hmm. you know, it's like I I, I, I wore waste. Um, but also I try to make sure that you know. <laughs> my my footprint is as small as possible, mm. but um, it makes me appreciative, like just like of the of the things I have and and my health primarily, like like mm. it's just what, you know watching people get sick, um and either getting older and get sick or just randomly get sick, and how it affects so much of your life. Yeah, I, I'm just grateful um, for the health I have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's just it's, it's just reminded my my life growing up is remind reminds me every day to be grateful. Mm. So that be this, and the fact that I get to make art for a living mm -hmm. every day to be grateful. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, there's it's it's funny or or interesting how that manifests itself with different people because there's going to be the person that like you has the humility and wants to pay it forward, you know, with all the things that you're involved in. Then there's a person like you, and I ain't have it. I got it out the mud. I'm about to just be outside, <laughs> fifteen different <laughs> chains on. So it's just always interesting where where a person can go in life and um. I definitely appreciate what you do on the screen, but you're just part of so many incredible initiatives, you know, um, in New York. And also, I want to start first before I go into your charitable works. Um, your anytime, am I saying this correct? Am I saying this correctly? Anytime. That's pretty anytime? good. That is pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I was looking at these pieces and I'm just like, dude, like this is so, so dope. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. To me, it's, it's, it's another brush to tell stories with, or uh, another color to, mm -hmm. to tell stories with. Um, as far as the paint palette, um, these are all, you know, vintage and antique pieces. Mm -hmm. You know, some some I acquire, some people bring to us and ask us to to redesign, mm -hmm. and then we get to, you know, we make them different and add to the story of these pieces of these people's lives, and then you know, add, you know, and they take it back with them. So mm -hmm. it's I, I I love it. I love it. And then you have um with it with your naming you had spoken about you use you specifically use uh, I believe it was uh derived from Prince's song titles your big Prince fan. I love Prince. I love, love Prince. <laughs> you just lit so, up. <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, yeah. 
I love Fred. So, so, so it, like, he inspires, you know, inspires this, you know, any time vintage, but like inspires me as an, as a, as an artist in general. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, so like, so some of the pieces are named after Prince songs. Yeah. Some of the pieces are named after our feelings I've had to listen to Prince songs. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you also have um, liberated people. Yes. And those fashions are also contribute to charities. Yes, um, some of them, not all of them, but like liberated people as a company that like, often work is work, working with nonprofits. Uh, but then some of the items in particular, uh, the like we donate for partial proceeds of some of the items towards mm-hmm. different nonprofits. Um, the Patriarchy is a bitch T-shirt. You know, we donate part of the proceeds to Black Women's right. Blueprint, which is a Black feminist nonprofit out of Brooklyn. Um, the Trayvon Martin Foundation, we donate part of the proceeds, obviously, to the Trayvon Martin Foundation. We've been working with Sabrina, um, working for years with that. Um, the and right now we've also been working with the Women's Prison Association. Uh, so it's 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 been dope, and we'll be launching. Um, a lo- so we also help design. Uh, the some of the merch for To Kill a Mockingbird on Broadway. Mm-hmm. So, so with you know, the sales of some of those, that merch, we've been, um, some of that's donated to different nonprofits, and, and soon we'll be um, selling uh, the uh, bear, the Refoundry Bear, uh, the Scout Bear on uh, with To Kill a Mockingbird. Mm-hmm. And so, and from Liberated Peoples, um, uh, fortunately, we'll be donating like uh, two dollars of every bear to Refoundry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I saw that work with with Foundry, and I'm just like, how are you doing all of these things at, at once? And it's like you're living out your dream, and you're helping other people, but you just seem so busy. Like, you know, how are you able to do all of this? Uh, make sure you don't sleep ever. <laughs> Clearly, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you just keep going from country to country to make uh, to outrun the the night, so you're always at daytime, so you never sleep. <laughs> I uh, know. No, you know, it's funny you say that because um, I one of my favorite Modern Love episodes you were in and I'm just like, oh, wow. Yeah, he was in that show. I love that show. I love that show. It's I love so cool. that episode. It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a, a beautiful dope. sensibility. Mm-hmm. I really love that. But I know that sometimes like people probably most mostly know you from The Wire um, as playing, playing Chris Partlow. Um, now you're going into now with your acting. You're getting the power book too. Um, you're on the series, the Ghost series. Yeah. 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 That was so, a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. So, but yeah. you know, it's interesting. I think that you know, you you've got this career that has just spanned like it's you know again starting with the wire, just just moving forward. Like you never stopped running. You've been in a lot of things. I mean, that has to feel like really good to know that you're always seen and people see and and know your work. It feels good to have good yeah. projects. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and because I mean that's that's why I do it because I like. Storytelling and I like you know telling good stories mm-hmm. and and you know it's dope that people you know are digging it. Um, yeah. I I did a Shakespeare in the Park last summer or the summer before this most recent summer. Okay, and that that was amazing. Like we did we did Merchant of Venice, um, set in the West African community in Harlem, translated mm-hmm. uh, adapted by Justin Boy, um, mm-hmm. and we had so much fun doing that. And it was the first big show. Back in New York, play back in New York since COVID. Mm-hmm. Um, the, there was a documentary done by um, by HBO that you can check out, or or it's on PBS as well. Mm-hmm. But we had so much fun doing that. We also went through a lot of, you know, a lot of hard times because of the storms and, and mm-hmm. this is outdoors. That and it was healing in many ways. That like I would have done that play had nobody showed up, you know, to, oh, to, yeah. to watch. You know, and it was it was so therapeutic doing that play. Mm-hmm. So yeah. So I've been I've been fortunate though that people do show up <laughs> and they tune in <laughs> and show up to the theater. So I, it's it's cool. I think it starts with you know you know the collaborators first. Yeah, the people you collab- collaborate with. For sure. And then with collaborators, I mean I know like a lot of the products that you know like the old man. You are, you work opposite a lot of really really big names. Um, so for you, it doesn't have to be a big name to be a project that you're passionate about. No, no, okay. it doesn't. Mm-hmm. No, it doesn't. And then a lot of times, like, people will think, like, you know, of course, New York or L.A. It's, are great to be in if you want to get immersed into the scene. But then you also work in a lot of, you do theater as well. But would you say that um, not being in L.A., is is that something that is presents a challenge or does it really matter? I mean, it's, it matters less and less. It's mattered less and less over the years for a number of years now, but, mm-hmm. but particularly after, during and after COVID, yeah. so, so much is virtual. But even before then, 
I, I, I mean, there's a there's a chance that you know, you know, I've missed out on some meetings right. or, or 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 parts and so on just cause, because I wasn't in LA. But mm-hmm. but but the quality of my life, I I, I wouldn't trade for anything. For anything uh, else. Being, being in New York, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Brooklyn. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I'm gonna trade Brooklyn for what? <laughs> <laughs> Is that for what? <laughs> you, ever, you ever go to a Nigerian restaurant? Can Can you cook? <laughs> I I can cook. I don't get to cook often, but I enjoy cooking. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I like I like um I like suya. Ah, uh, you like suya? I now. love okay. it. Are you kidding me? A whole suya's plate good. put in front of me. <laughs> suya's good. Suya's yeah. good. Especially after like a late night of, of dancing all night. You exactly. Go and get some suya. Yeah. Do you, do you just go hang out amongst the people, or do you feel like are you too recognizable? No, no. I'm I'm I I love to hang out. I love to hang out. I use I don't I don't hang out that much because I'm right. always like you, you're like, working. Yeah, you're busy. <laughs> yeah, you know. Um, but I like I love to like do cultural things. I love yeah. to, you know, be out and about. And you know, Brooklyn's full of that. New York in general, you know. So nah, I I don't ever want to get to a point where I can't be with with people. Yeah, yeah. I, I hear that for sure. Um, so what are you, what else are you working on? Is there anything that you know I should know that you haven't talked about? Like right now you're in Paris. Yes. Right what's now that, I'm in what Paris. is that like? <laughs> Paris is amazing. Like it's it's a ridiculously gorgeous city. I hear that. I've never been there. It, it makes it makes no sense how much beauty is in the city. Right. Like around all the corners. Um and the history. I just yeah, it's, it's, I I love it. Um I'm right. I came for like a wedding uh, at the end of August um, in Malta, but I decided to come to Paris early to just like be closer and like, hang out with um, yeah some friends. Mm-hmm. And and now I started a well I'm at the end of a two week uh, uh, intensive French school. And so oh like one um, of those immersive courses where yeah mm-hmm. yeah so I've been tomorrow will be my last day. How, well, where what was your fluency or even like what did you know before you started the course? Settle, settle. <laughs> I mean, really? Zero. Yeah, I didn't know so where, where are you at now? Uh, très bien. <laughs> <laughs> très bien. Okay, I don't speak any French, and it's no. funny because like usually like I can pick up language a little bit, but or at least to the point of like understanding. But for some reason, French has never connected with my ear. Like I just can't say it. I can't. I don't know what it is. I just got to get it's, past whatever the barrier is. It's a tough language. It is, yeah. and it's got a lot of rules that are then broken a lot of times in the language. Like it, it's so, you know, I I I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'm learning it, but I I'm definitely like I'm not conversational or anything like that. I've got two weeks of French that happened to be in, in Paris getting it, which is great. But I'm, I'm in love with the process, so that that helps. I, I go to school every day, um, and I'm there all like all day you know in classes so like and then i enjoy it so that's helpful i love that you're like you're like i mean to me like you're the embodiment of somebody that's like, truly like living their dream you know <laughs> it's like you're really you're, you're really you're living a life that you intended that's really cool to see that i i i think that's part of what anitone is about anitone vintage that's part of what liberated people is about you know like you you create yourself you know you, yeah. you create your reality Mm-hmm. No, I, I, I truly see that. And I also, just before you even go, um, I hear that in Paris, there's a lot of really rich uh, black culture. There's a lot of rich black folk here? Mm-hmm. Culture, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, no, when oh, I say rich, rich I'm, talk, I'm talking about rich black culture. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Not like I yeah. heard they got money. No, I didn't mean it's like that. <laughs> they, they got money. Where they at? Tell me where they at. <laughs> they, they ain't at the museums. That's where I've been hanging out. I don't see them. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh my yeah, God. Like, this, this, this city, this city has been appreciative of black mm-hmm. culture, mm-hmm. you know, for a long time. Um, like, you know, this is a city where, you know, like Josephine Baker, James Baldwin, mm-hmm. a, a number of they didn't want to leave. Systems. They were like, yeah, yeah. They felt, mm-hmm. very well. No, received. it's been absolutely. Now that being said, I, I I love it because of that, and like you can you can be an artist here, but like, mm-hmm. I'm, it doesn't I'm not escape it doesn't escape me that you know part of what gives France. It's it's cultural wealth. It's and it's monetary wealth. It's been you know centuries of exploitation and colonization. Right, exactly. So, yeah, we're not, so we're not they, blind to the reality of it. Yeah. Exactly. So like they they can they can have this beautiful French socialist system in which they take they take care of so many of the citizens. They put human beings first, which is which is you know enviable. 
Um, that, but it got to this point, you know, because they just had such a, you know, such wealth built up from years of colonization. Mm -hmm. So, like, and it's not unique, obviously, to France. But um, no. but one thing I I do, one of many things I love about this country is that it feels like they value the human being. Mm -hmm. over over profits and you can tell by the healthcare system you can tell by by the social welfare like it's just like, like what what is best for you know the, the most amount of people you could i mean their the longevity their life like the you know, lifespan is greater than in the states yeah, so they eat a lot of bread and they still look healthier and fit <laughs> yeah <laughs> they age well here man they right. age well here yeah they smoke like crazy and they still outlive in us it's crazy that is wild Maybe, yeah. maybe, the, maybe the air is even better. Uh, you know, there's just so many things that contribute. Less, less preservatives. I mm -hmm. mean, there's like, like, they don't, no one, like very few people here go bankrupt. Definitely don't, mm -hmm. they don't go bankrupt because of, uh, because of medical bills. I was talking to a friend here mm -hmm. and, uh, and she was telling me how, you know, she, her heart breaks whenever she goes to a Walmart or a Kmart in the States and she sees, you know, all these elderly people working. I'm like, what I do you mean? Do, she said, yes. and, and, she, and she's like, well, she's like, what? she's like, well, have you looked around? Our, our old people, they're not working. They retire, you know, mm. and, and they stay retired. And we make sure that we have a system in which they can live retired, you know? No, it's true. You go so, to Walmart, all the greeters are older, retired people that should be retired. And as, yeah. I, as I have talked to people like that, and they're just like, well, you know, I just needed some extra money. It's like, why would somebody have to be 65 and up needing extra money? You're, she's right. That's a very good... No, very after good living point. a whole life of working and, and contributing, whole, whole like, life. they have to... yeah. yeah. No, that 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 doesn't that system that's it a, a system like that there's some flaws that can be adjusted if we if we yeah. it's a failure in imagination mm. did you know that they cannot have walmarts within new york city proper i have heard yes there's like yeah, one yeah. kmart left yes yeah they can't have walmarts now target i mean i guess it's not as cheap but like walmart deliberately will undercut local businesses like as like a loss like loss leader and then you'll walk in and then you know get to whatever thing but you can't have it in New York City. It'll destroy because the, the the heart of New York City is small business. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's I mean, Walmart is, a, is exemplifies the type of capitalism we practice there. So mm -hmm. I, I it, so it it's like it's it is Walmart is us. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It's true. I you know, Benga, I I don't want to take up too much more of your time. I truly enjoy speaking with you. I mean, you're just like you're so a man of many things. But, you know, in, in many ways, it's a very African thing. To have 12 different, <laughs> 12 different things going on, and every yes, single uh, pursuit, you're totally, totally 100% in, you know? <laughs> only, only, you. An African, only an African person can say that. <laughs> yes, now, if you don't have at least six jobs, you're lazy. It's like, what are you doing? You're supposed to have six. Like, get up and get another. You only one. have four. Uh, I guess that's how you were raised. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it, it's been such a pleasure speaking with you, and you know, and now I'm just, I'm waiting for you to open up your restaurant because, you know, Buka closed down <laughs> on Fulton. But we still have to restart. Yeah, Buka closed down. When? Because they have been dead. But yeah, they, they've been closed at least since the, I want to say, maybe a the beginning of the pandemic. Because they started having these weird hours where it's like, well, okay, are y'all open? Like, you knock on the door and they let you in. But um, Amarashi's still around. Oh, wow. But you, know, you know, Amarachi's more mixy. I think Buka is like more low key. Let me just come in, get a little something. Amarachi is yeah, more yeah, like yeah. Turn, up, turn up gang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it just depends uh, on what kind of mood oh. that you're in. So, what you're telling me is there's I'm a space you that, that needs to be. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was <laughs> <laughs> We're going to call it Benga Lounge. <laughs> I, I have one hour of sleep a day that I can easily sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like, guys, we're open for an hour. <laughs> it's, a, it's a happy hour. <laughs> no, but Benga, thank you so much for your time. Thank Again, you. Thank you for making no, time. No, no, no. Thank you. Again, my name is Coco with BlackFilm.com, and I am here with Benga Tinabe, and, you know, actor, producer. Um, he's starring in many shows. Probably two Ghost, Ghost is coming out. Um, you'll, you've seen him on FX on The Old Man. He's got this dope, dope episode of Modern Love. Oh my goodness, you guys have to see. I think it's the second. I think it's the second one of the season. It's the second one. Season, season two. Yeah, yeah, it's so dope. That's my. That's one of my favorite shows. So I was, I was like, yeah, he's in Modern Love. <laughs> but I mean, it was great talking to you, and I just look forward to to seeing what you do in the future. And if I bump into you in Brooklyn, I am going to crack up laughing like, like I mean, like side splitting, hilarious. It'll be so funny. <laughs> 
if I see like a super food town or something. Give me a <laughs> hug when you see me. <laughs> right, I will. I'll be like, my brother. <laughs> Thank you, Megan. Hey. <laughs> hey. You, have, you have a good time out there. And, and like, I'm sorry, the, the random brilliance of saying, hey, I'm in, I'm in Paris. Let me take a two-week immersive French course. You know, it's only certain kind of people think like that. And it's so brilliant and hilarious to me at the same time. I appreciate that. I mean, there's, there's so much beauty here, and including the language, especially yeah. the language. I felt like I can come here and not dive in. But you know, now the challenge is French Canadian is different. Louisiana French is different. Oh my goodness. Okay, let me get a French French first. first. <laughs> exactly. Start off with the you know the French French, then we'll go. Yeah. Right, Le I'll, baguette. I'll, 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 I exact baguette. But that, now that was African. <laughs> Well, I, I want to get African French down. Well, African, oh, yeah, that's going to be good. That is useful. I yes. would like to learn African French for sure, because then I could really communicate with people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll be like, yeah, I'm in the conversation now. <laughs> 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 All right, Vanga. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you later for sure. We'll talk about upcoming projects as well. It was good to talk to you, and hopefully we'll be able to talk about something else soon. I appreciate that. Thank you for making the time. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. If you want to see more content like this on blackfilm.com, make sure you like subscribe, and ring that bell.